Welcome yogis. Today we'll move through a vinyasa flow designed to warm up and open your shoulders, specifically with flexion, so reaching above head. That is to make ultimately back bends easier. You'll need one prop. You can use a block, but if you don't have a block, you can use something like a ball or even a book. Let's start in a seated position, really fully arriving. bringing the focus to breath. Now, however you're seated, split your knees a little bit, send your hands down. Send the right shoulder up toward your right ear and tip the body in that direction. And then other side, left shoulder up by left ear, tip the body in that direction. And then stay in motion. No real rules except to bring warmth, movement, and satisfying breath. Stay in motion 10 or 15 more seconds. Just want to get the blood flowing in the shoulders before we ask them to open. You can roll the shoulders onto your back. Don't be afraid to move the torso. Stay firm in your belly. And then come on into a neutral seat. Sit tall, doesn't matter how you're sitting and take your prop between your hands. Send the arms out in front, hug the belly in strongly, and then reach your arms up overhead. Notice something, if you send your ribs forward, you might be able to get the sensation of opening your arms uh, a little bit and opening the shoulders, but that's a cheat. So we're gonna hug the front ribs in, get firm at the belly, and then readjust, so reach that uh, reach your arms backward again. Do it again. Hug the front body in, reaching up and back. One more time. Hug the front body in, reach up and back as far as you can. Now we'll pulse it 12 times. Take an inhale and then pulse back. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, straight through the elbows, 3, two, and one. Put a bend in the elbows. Same idea. Exhale, hug the front body in. Inhale, reach your arms backward as best you can. See to it that the elbows don't fly out, but they point forward. And then we'll do it again. Exhale, front body comes in. Inhale, reaching back as far as you're able. Exhale, front body in. Inhale, reach it back one more time. Exhale, front ribs come in. Inhale, reaching back. Again, we'll pulse at 12 times. Take an inhale and go back. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Send the arms out in front and release the ball down. I want you to feel something. Take the left arm up, bend that elbow, and reach it back a little bit. So part of the flexibility is usually, if there's a limitation there, it's partially a strength limitation toward the back of the shoulder. So you can feel that here by trying to point that left hand out wide to the side. See if you lose anything. See if it feels like some muscle has atrophied. So keep sending it wide to the side just to feel that. And then one last time, keep that left arm or hand open wide and then send it behind you again. See where the limit lives. Okay, and then that's it. Release it, shake it out. Other arm reaches up, bend the elbow. Okay, no big deal. But see if you can take your hand out wide to the side and then reach back again. Okay, keep experimenting. Reach back, reach open. Again, reach back, reach open. Stay with that range where you're building new muscle. 
control. And then release it completely. Let's draw the shoulders onto the back and then we'll dive into all fours. Okay. Send your gaze over the left shoulder, send your hips that way too. On the exhale, empty out in cat shape. Inhale, look over right shoulder, send the hips to the right. Inhale, up to cow. And then exhale, empty out cat. Finding your way to downward facing dog. Go ahead and bend through each knee quite a lot. And then bend both knees, but send your hips way off to the right. Press long through that left arm so you can feel the stretch at the side of the shoulder. Keep pressing your belly toward your thighs to get the left side chest to open. Through center over to the left, bend the knees, reach through right arm. And keep sending the chest back and the belly toward your thighs. Get what you can from this. And then through center, let's wave forward, plank position. Exhale, lower all the way onto your belly. Get a hold of your prop. Send your forehead to the mat, untuck toes, reach the arms forward, gripping whatever you got. And this time we're going to keep the arms in full extension and reach up above the earth as high as you can. We'll do three rounds of 10 and that's it. Okay. Relax at the neck. Take an inhale, and then lift for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, rest. Take an inhale. Again, lift, 9, keep going. One, breathe, rest. Last time, inhale and go. Ten, nine, keep going. And release, slide the hands underneath the ribs. Send your heart up, cobra. Exhale to downward facing dog. Walk the feet halfway up the mat. Press the chest way, way back. And take right hand to left outer ankle. Reach through left fingers as you look underneath that tricep. Be tented, especially on the forefinger and the thumb, so you can ask for an external rotation of the arm, like that left soft part of the elbow crease could roll in and forward. For a little extra credit, hover the left arm up above the earth without changing too much. So go ahead and we'll pulse even. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And switch it. Left hand, right outer ankle. Really reach through right arm as you look underneath that tricep. Tent at the forefinger and thumb to emphasize your external rotation. And then try getting clearance from the earth. Don't change too much, but lift. And then pulse for 10, 9, 8. Keep going. 5, 4. And then set it back down. Hands to the top of the mat. And then feet between the hands. Slide fingers to shins or the floor as you lengthen. Fold all the way down. And rise all the way up. Arms to Tadasana. Keep flowing. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to dive down. Inhale, flatten. Exhale, step the left foot to the back of your mat. 
creating high lunge, reach the arms up. Take the left wrist, reach up and over to the right. To get more from this, tip yourself back. Then slide the right hand to your waist and see if you can reach that left arm back quite a bit, being pretty straight through the elbow. Do your best. Let's get even more from it, setting the back knee down. Some of you might even reach the ground. Leaning back with it. Big breath. Exhale, roll your hands down, sweep the right leg high behind, and find your flow. Downward facing dog. Let's come onto toes, bend the knees, you'll step or float between your hands. Lengthen, bow and rise. Arms release. Stay in motion. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale, flatten. Step the right foot to the back. Create your high lunge. Taking hold of right wrist, reach up and over to the left. Now to get more from it, tip back a little bit. Sliding left hand to your waist, keep going. Setting the right knee down. You might even touch the floor or a prop. We won't push it. Be sure to lean back to sending the right arm backward. And return to center. Hands will frame the foot. Sweep the left leg behind. Find your flow. Downward facing dog. Sweep the right leg out behind. Open the hip, bend the knee, point it up to the sky. Look up and over your left shoulder to see your foot pressing your chest back. Circle the right knee up and wide to the side as you step this foot outside your hand. Left hand goes wide, but on the ground. Reach the right arm up and lean away from your inner knee. To make this about the shoulder, take your right hand behind your head. Send that elbow way back. And then reach across your temple line or almost behind your head if your body will allow. Long breaths. And roll the hands down, walk them over to the left as you parallel your feet. And walk the hands forward as you press chest and head downward. Can you be on fingertips? A little bit of active stretching. We're gonna lift the left hand up a little bit. Try not to move it wide to the side, just up. We'll go for 10 times. Take an inhale, exhale, lift. Nine, eight, keep going. And then reset. Second side, inhale. Lift your right hand, keeping the elbow as straight as you can. Eight. Seven, keep going. Six, five, four, three, 
set it down, and then pivot all the way around to frame your right foot. Find your flow. Downward facing. Send the left leg up, open that hip, bend the knee. You look up and over the right shoulder to see your foot. Pressing the chest way back. Knee goes wide, up and around to tap the left tricep. Plant this foot outside your hand. Right hand is wide on the ground. Left arm lifts up. Lean away from your inner knee. Enjoy. To get into these shoulders, left hand behind your head. Send the elbow as wide as can be. And then reach across your temple line or almost behind your head if your body will allow. Long breaths. And exhale, roll both hands down. Walk over to the right with parallel feet. This time, take your hands outside your feet and tuck the fingers under. You fold down, but stay active through shoulders. So lift them away from your ears and send the elbows as wide as can be. Several breaths. Flat back, come to fingertips. Pivot around, frame the left foot. Find your vinyasa. And downward facing dog. Okay, set the knees down. You'll need a wall for this next portion. This is another active stretch for shoulder flexion and external rotation. So you want to sit up against a wall. You're going to send your arms up with your thumbs facing the wall. Okay, see if you can touch the thumbs right to the wall and then hug the front ribs in again. If it's too easy, come away from the wall and try it again. If the front ribs jutted forward, hug them back in. Can you reach higher up on the wall? Again, if that's too easy, scoot away. Another inch or two, see where you can get. Arms up, thumbs touch. If the front body came forward, hug it in. Reach a little bit taller and then release. Repeat one more time. Maybe straight through the elbows. And then release, shake it out. We'll move into one powerful but passive shoulder stretch. And that is going to require either a wall or a chair, piece of furniture, even a windowsill would work. work yourself far away enough from the prop that you can get full length in your arms. Send your legs back or your knees back so that your hips are hovering about above your knees. Your chest will fold down or melt down and the head will be heavy. It really helps to stay for a full minute or even two minutes. Even though there is something passive about this, Notice that you can get active by the way that you straighten through your elbows. See if that changes things for you. 
You can also experiment with what it's like to internally rotate the arms so that soft crease of the elbow would roll down and in. And then try externally rotating the soft crease in and up. Think of it as experimentation. Time is really the best ingredient, the most essential ingredient. And patience, really small incremental progress. Keep finding the fullness of your breathing. We're halfway into our hold. You can also experiment with letting the shoulders drift up towards your ears. Just see what you get from that. And then plugging the shoulders down and away from your ears. See what the opening feels like there. Yeah, all of our bodies will be different. Usually the best alignment is somewhere at the middle ground. And then climb out. Sit down, rest the shoulders down and onto your back. Let the blood flow come back in. Then I'd encourage you to keep finding a wheel practice. You can climb onto your back. We'll do this twice. Okay, scoot your heels in close to the sits bones. Take the hands alongside your ears. Stay with me for a second. You can lift your seat only enough to point the knees forward and then just kind of slide your body toward the top of the mat. That just opens up the hip flexors and the quads and starts the whole opening of the, the shoulder flexion. Then plant your hands, come to your head. If all goes well, climb all the way into your wheel. And so now not only are you in shoulder flexion with external rotation, but you are also weight bearing. So there's no um, surprise that this is really challenging for many of us. Yeah, let's spend a few more breaths, just building space. Straightening those elbows, perhaps even one at a time, pressing the heart back. And then come all the way down to recline. Hug the knees in, rock side to side. If you're up for one more wheel, I'd encourage you to try it at the wall. Just the head would face the wall. Consider setting up the same way. Plant your hands, bring the heels in really close and the knees forward. Stretch the quads, the hip flexors. Initiate that whole chain of opening. Climb onto your head. Press through fingers and arms. And then this way you can press your chest up to the wall. Get those arms as straight as they can be. Giant breaths. Take it down. Knees can flop side to side. Send your feet wider than the mat and the knees knock toward each other. And as one piece of recovery, you're gonna cross the arms in front of your body like you're giving yourself a hug, but then let the arms get heavy. And let there be a progressive softening. And then 
to switch, other arm on top. If it's feeling okay, you can extend the legs at this point. This is our preamble to Shavasana. What can you release at your neck, at the outer shoulders, everywhere? This is comfy enough. You could stay right here for Shavasana. Otherwise, release the arms alongside your body. We're here for roughly two minutes. I'll wake us up. It's really worth this time. You will get more from this practice as a whole if you are committed to your Shavasanas. Sale can be a letting go. Let's return to breathing, big breathing, and small movement. Stretching. We'll climb on up to a seat. Thank you for being here, Yogi. Lately, I've asked a community question after Shavasana, and today is no different. 
Today I'm interested in what prop did you use? Some of you have a block, I know, but others don't just haven't purchased a block for one reason or another. No big deal. I think you can do yoga with no prop whatsoever. Um, but what creative prop did you use? I'd love to hear it. Stay in touch. Namaste.